much fun in the studio. We're excited because we're going to be airing our cola. This is our story. I am Jana Johnson, joined by... And I'm Keyann Armstrong. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight for our cola. This is our story. We have 24 wonderful stories to, to share with you tonight. I'm going to say amazing a lot, but I thought I'd say our <laughs> wonderful right there. But you know what? We've got a lot of storytellers in the house. You see some of them back here, so let's give them a round Yay. of applause, too. <laughs> Our goal tonight is to have so much fun in this area. We have food, we have all these great people telling a lot of stories, we want a lot of laughs, and the goal for us tonight is to get 100 phone calls. So we want to have you watch the program here in a second, and then after that we're going to tell you how you can get a copy of the DVD. Absolutely. So don't go anywhere. 24 stories coming your way. Lots of wonderful stories, amazing stories all about Arcola this evening. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned and sing the next song with us. Arcola, this is our story. I want to tell you all a story about my favorite spot. If you can find it on the map, you'll see it's just a dot. It's a place they call our cola on Route 133, where it crosses 57 here at exit 203. Broom corn capital of the world is right here in our town. On the weekend after Labor Day, folks come from miles around to eat and drink and see the stars of the Candle Opry. We know how to celebrate at exit 203. At exit 203, you can have yourself a ball. Call your friends at the football game, the Broom Corn Festival. Fellowship at the coffee breaks are crazy as can be. But the people here have what it takes at Exit 203. Why the world renowned Lawn Rangers originated here. They were raised on broom corn, fertilized with beer. Some good old boys out having fun, and I'm sure that they'll agree. They're proud to be a native son of Exit 203. At Exit 203, you can have yourself a ball with all your friends at the football game, the Bloom Corn Festival. The fellowship at the coffee breaks are crazy as can be, but the people here have what it takes at Exit 203. Now, our cola isn't very big, 2,700 strong. Some rich, some poor, some good and bad, the usual right and wrong. But if you ever need a friend, there's no better place to be. You can always get a helping hand at Exit 203. At Exit 203, you can have yourself a ball with all your friends at the football game, the Broom Corn Festival. The fellowship at the coffee breaks are crazy as can be. But the people here have what it takes at Exit 203. Arcola, This Is Our Story, is brought to you in part by the Monahan family all live in Arcola and carry on the family tradition of supporting their community of Arcola. Monahan Partners hopes you enjoy Arcola, This Is Our Story. We're in this together. Additional information about Monahan Partners available online at monahanpartners.com. The Libman Company, with their mission of bringing the world a better way to clean through innovation, design, and quality. Thanks to the Arcola This Is Our Story storytellers for making this show possible. Enjoy Arcola This Is Our Story from the employees and management at the Libman Company of Arcola. The Arcola Foundation supports business, tourism, and economic development in Arcola. The Arcola Foundation is excited to support Arcola. This is our story. The Arcola Foundation supports the storytellers and community for coming together for this TV program on WEIU. The Green Mill Village Properties, which are Best Western Plus, Carriage Crossing Senior Living, and Green Mill Village Theater are happy to help support the storytellers and production of Arcola, This Is Our Story, to WEIU. Enjoy the show from Green Mill Village Properties. Diamond Brothers Insurance, insurance since 1867. Diamond Brothers supports the efforts of all the storytellers and supporters of Arcola, This Is Our Story. Enjoy the program from everyone at the Diamond Brothers. A high level of integrity and a strong belief in the good people of the Arcola area describes Arcola First Bank. 
Arcola First Bank is proud to help bring you Arcola, This Is Our Story on WEIU-TV. By the 1830s, a man left Kentucky and wanted to go west, and he'd come north out of Kentucky up through Charleston, Illinois, and come across the uh, Springfield Trace, which is basically goes east to west, and it was basically the uh, one, Route 133 at this time. He'd come across the trace and headed west. When he got to Douglas County, he struggled across this marshy, muddy prairie, okay? When he got to the Kaskaskia, in his covered wagon, he crossed the Kaskaskia, which is deep, black mud, and it was a struggle. By the time he got to the other side, he decided he was going to camp for a while and stay. Lo and behold, where he decided to camp, he found a natural spring. So he decided, well, you know, this isn't a bad place. The more he was there, the more he liked it. So he ended up building a cabin and settled there. As he started making money, he built a ferry, and he became the first guy in Baghdad, and the town became Baghdad, which it thrived. It had uh, blacksmith shops, general stores, grist mill, had uh, all sorts of things the people of Baghdad would want at the time. They lived and thrived there in Baghdad. Everything was great, and then all of a sudden, their world changed. In 1854, the Illinois Central Railroad come right down through the middle of Douglas County. It would have been like uh, a major interstate coming near your town. Things were going to change. They didn't need to depend on the river travel, they needed to go where the highway was, which was the Iron Horse Highway, of course. So uh, the winter of 1854 and 1855 was a super duper cold winter. The river froze over, it snowed and sleeted real bad, and it was so cold it stayed on for months. So the people of Baghdad, uh, took all their buildings, clapboard and cabin buildings, and they built sleds, and they put them on the sleds. And they took horses, it was four and a half mile from the Kaskaskia River to where the IC come through, and they dragged all the buildings to, uh, to where the IC was, and they named the town Okaw. And everybody went, except for Alan Campbell. He stayed behind because he couldn't uh, move a brick factory and a tile factory. You know, so uh, so everybody moved, but Alan Campbell, he stayed in Baghdad, and everybody else went to Okaw, and it became a town. And the depot was the very first building built in Arcola. Before the town got there, it was a two-story clapboard building on the west side of the tracks in the center of town. And when they got the buildings there, they set up on both sides of the tracks, the east side and the west side, north and south, along the tracks, it was two rows, and. It lived, the people lived and thrived and uh, everything was good. They had doctors, and general stores, and blacksmith shops, same as Baghdad, but a little bit more because they had uh, important people coming through from Chicago to St. Louis and it, it, it just changed everything. The town thrived and grew and on towards 1872, the uh, Illinois Midland Railroad come from the east to the west and crossed the north part of town. The town became a crossroads of two railroads and helped it thrive even more because we got eaten with east and west traffic. Uh, when they decided that they needed a post office, they uh, sent all the paperwork to Washington and told them the town, the name of the town was Okaw. So uh, the paperwork come back and said there was already a town called Okaw in Illinois, so they couldn't pick that. So the postmaster in the depot was just struggled for hours trying to figure out a name of the town. And he noticed a large crowd of people outside the depot, so he stepped out on the deck and he explained it all. And a guy in the back of the crowd, a guy named James Keeney, hollered out Arcola. Ah, uh, everybody was delighted and it was, they took it right on the spot. So that's how Arcola became and got its name. Nineteen forty eight Bob and Betty Earl bought the drugstore from LG Engel and there'd been a drugstore on that corner since eighteen eighty six. After they had the store for a while they decided to put in a soda fountain and serve Sundays, ice cream, and also coffee. Well the coffee turned out to be a big hit. 
and they had a lot of people coming in regularly in the morning, afternoon, sometimes several times a day to drink coffee. So after a while, Bob thought it'd be neat to put their names on the cup. And he got that idea from barber shops who in those days, men would come in for a shave and they'd have their own shaving mug with, and they'd have it up on the shelf with their name on it. So Bob did that with the coffee cups. Started out with eight members and then it gradually grew and it grew and the industrial arts class at the high school made a rack to hold the cups. And there ended up being 162 cups in this rack. To get in the club, you had to drink 100 cups of coffee or five gallons. And once those 162 spaces were taken, you had to wait till somebody died or moved away from town in order to get your cup up there. Some of the cups were unique. Some had symbols on them rather than just names. And uh, Bob Errol, there were a lot of Bobs, so you had to have some way to tell them apart. And uh, Bob Errol had his cup, and when he retired, a local artist painted a rocking chair on the back of his cup. So that was how we identified his. There was another Bob that uh, had a hammer on his. He was a contractor. Another Bob had an ax on his. He was uh, uh, cut down trees. We also uh, had a purple flag that we hung out in front of the pharmacy with a coffee cup on it. When that flag was out there, people knew that coffee was free. Every Monday morning, the bank would buy coffee from 8 to 8.30. Every Wednesday, we had a drawing of some of the regular members and whoever won got to buy coffee from 8 to 8.30 on Thursday. The coffee club really started getting recognition about 1952 when they had articles in the Decatur paper and the Champagne paper about it. And the one in the Champagne paper was picked up by the AP and went all over the country and all over the world. But it really hit it big in 1977 when Charles Kralt came to town. He came for the Broomcorn Festival, which the featured attraction was Old's Gold 40 Horse Hitch, which was a wagon hooked up, 40 horses hooked up to one wagon. He usually spent two or three days in a town when he traveled, and while he was here, he came in the drugstore and saw the coffee cups, and he said, I'll be back. And in November of that year, he came back and did a story on the coffee club, which ran on the CBS Evening News. And that started a long friendship between Bob Errol and Charles Corral. In 1988, the CBS ran a special back on the road with Charles Corral. And one of the stories they did was on the coffee club. And they interviewed Corral and they said, uh, can you pick a favorite show out of all of them that you've done? And he said, no, not can't really pick one, but he said, uh, there's three that stick in my mind all the time, and one of them was the coffee club. In 1998, we decided to close. So when I finally did sell the building, I talked to the Chamber of Commerce, and we literally picked up the back bar of the fountain and moved it over to the depot. So the coffee pot's off, but uh, I think the spirit and memories of the coffee club will live on. Well, in the early 90s, our uh, mayor appointed an economic development committee. Uh, within a short period of time after it was appointed, I was on the committee. We had a business that wanted to move to Arcola, a retail business, and uh, we kind of took an inventory of what we had to offer this company. And it turned out we didn't have any land, we didn't have any incentives, and we weren't sure we could even hook them up to our water system. So they ended up coming anyway, but they bought an existing building. Uh, so that made us kind of take stock of if we really want to get serious about economic development or not. We negotiated with a bank in Chicago for 60 acres near our existing businesses that already located on the other side of the interstate. They bought the, Arcola Foundation bought the 60 acres and through uh, donations from our uh, community uh, and income from the farm, the foundation was able to pay for that 60 acres in a few short years. And then we said, well, now we need an incentive. We got the water, we got the land. 
So we said, well, we need a TIF district. We had a consultant from Indianapolis come over to evaluate adding a TIF district to Arcola. He said, it will cost you $25,000 and I don't see enough growth in this community to pay me back for the $25,000 you'll have to spend. So, uh, so he went home and we said, we're not going to take no for an answer. So our Economic Development Committee wrote their own application for $5,000. We got our TIF approved. So now we had water, land, and TIF. And then we had a customer, <laughs> uh, Collegiate uh, Cap and Gown, who has a building in downtown Arcola, an old Chevrolet garage, uh, employing about 25 people, was building a new 100,000 square foot facility around $5 million investment. Uh, and they were looking for a place to locate and they picked Arcola. And uh, since then they've grown to 170,000 uh, square feet. And our mayor was also our economic uh, development consultant was able to parlay the fact they were thinking of moving to a different state into a uh, $500,000 almost uh, grant, which paid for a water tower and the road and more infrastructure work. So uh, Cap and Gown really got us started there. Herf Jones call themselves now, but uh, it's been a great addition to the community. Uh, when the man said, you will have trouble raising the 25,000. Well, since the TIF district started till today, the TIF district has raised $18 million. So uh, he was off a little bit. And that all that money has to be spent in the TIF district. So that's why we have this long list of projects we've completed because we've been able to generate money from people's property taxes and reinvest them in the area. So we're real proud of that. And it's helped our school by bringing more students in. It's helped our housing, again, bringing more families in. So we're one of the few towns that their population is growing uh, of our size. We're lucky to be by the interstate. I would give some credit to that, but I think the spirit of the community is what's really carrying us. It dates back to broom corn, of course. Our coal is known for its uh, brooms. Uh, and it, you know, in the 1800s, it used to be produced here in our coal and the surrounding areas. But it was a very labor-intensive process. Uh, so it got to be pretty expensive. Uh, and in, in order to maintain the production, they started importing the broom corn from uh, a town in uh, Mexico called Cadereta. It's in the state of Nuevo Leon. That there was a man named Fidel Silva who went to Laredo, Texas, and uh, you know, started working in a warehouse, or he had a friend that worked in a warehouse that processed broom corn for the Thomas Monahan Company. And the friend recommended that he come up to Arcola and see if there was work here. He eventually found work with the Libman Company. Uh, and at first, you know, his English wasn't very good. Uh, so he was, you know, assigned to do very menial tasks, you know, just basic tasks. And the story goes that a machine broke down and he was the only one who could fix it. So it was kind of discovered that this was a very skilled laborer who knew how to do the broom making skills that maybe not a lot of people know how to do. Uh, so he really got to be a instrumental uh, employee for the, the Libman company. During that time, there was a labor shortage, I think because of the Vietnam War. And so uh, he, I believe the Libman company got permission from the Department of Labor to uh, start hiring from uh, Mexico. So he kind of became an instrument of recruiting uh, and was able to share the job opportunities with family members and other people in Cadereta. So people knew there were jobs here and started coming. Uh, most of them were relatives, but my grandfather, Jaime Garza, he was not a relative of the Silva family, but again, he knew that there were jobs here. So he came in 1969. He worked here in Arcola for two years uh, before he then brought his family over. He had seven kids and a wife, uh, and they all packed up into a Chevy Impala. 
and drove over a thousand miles to be here in Arcola. They, they, you know, they found a house, they settled down. They were very poor, they lived a very hard life, but Arcola was an opportunity for them to actually have some, a better life than they had there in Mexico. Uh, my mom, when she moved here, would have been nine. So she had three older brothers and then two younger sisters and a younger brother. The uh, two older brothers and then the younger siblings, they all started school in about 1971. And you have to remember that at that time, you know, there were no ES English as second language teachers. So I asked my mom, so what did you do? How did you learn English? And she said, you know, you just, you figured it out. There was a family uh, that helped a lot of these Mexican families. In addition to, you know, the Libmans and the officials who were helping some of the Mexican families, two of the most important people in my family's life and then a lot of Mexican families' lives uh, were the Kramers, uh, Roy and Ruth Kramer. They were ministers of the Nazarene Church here in, in Arcola. Ruth worked at Libman's, I believe, in the late 60s and started meeting some of the Mexican men who worked there at Libman's and saw that they were lonely and started inviting them to church with her and her husband in Mattoon. And then, you know, it just kind of took off from there. Uh, as the family started arriving, they were helping them with translation services, with helping them get students enrolled in, uh, in school. I would say that the immigrants here in Arcola who aren't from Calarita are probably benefiting from those people before them. They are encountering a town that is probably a little bit more open-minded than some other small towns. They are encountering, you know, their language in the grocery store or in the restaurants. And so it, it, it is probably an easier transition for those later immigrants uh, because they have maybe family members or people who can help them find uh, resources in the community. And so I think it's important to recognize that um, those differences that people bring with them, those cultural differences, the language, the food, the celebrations, that they make a community more vibrant, a better place to live, and more accepting of differences. Roy and Lily Gear started their family in Arcola back in 1906 with the birth of twins, Albert and Alberta. Sadly, Albert died uh, shortly after birth. But over the next 25 years, 15 additional children were born to the family, giving Roy and Lily a total of 16 surviving children. They lived uh, in the center of Arcola in a modest home on uh, South Oak Street, where Roy died in 1934 at the young age of 48. That left Lily with uh, 15 children, eight daughters, seven sons, and the sons carried on their, their father's business, a drage business, until World War II broke out, and then one by one they slipped off to the war. John, oldest of the brothers, served with the 806th Tank Destroyer Battalion in the Philippines. Donnie served with the Pacific Fleet as a U.S. Naval Petty Officer aboard the destroyer escort USS Riddle. George was in the Army 95th Quartermaster Company, serving in North Africa, France, Germany, Belgium, England, and Holland. Harry was in the Army, Company B, 88th Signal Battalion, in Luzon, North Solomons, Guadalcanal, New Georgia, and Japan. Russ was in the Army Air Corps and served in the South Pacific. Bobby Gear was in the U.S. Army 83rd Infantry Division and served in France, Holland, and Germany. Jim, youngest of the brothers, joined the Army during his senior year of high school as soon as he turned 18 and earned the rank of corporal on the station in Japan. Bobby was my father, and he was the only one of the brothers who did not survive the war. He was killed in battle in, in Germany in a, near the town of uh, Kaplan. He was a staff sergeant leading a, a, a platoon of uh, an anti-tank platoon. He's buried in the American Military Cemetery in the Netherlands. I was 11 months old when, when Bobby was killed and was never given any stories about, about him or his service until 2003, when a gentleman, Lewis Wheeler from Boston, gave me a phone call. And Lewis was looking for helping his father locate family members of Bobby Gear. David had served with Bobby in Germany 
and Bobby was, was his hero. And he, he wanted to share some of those stories. It was a story of a platoon of eight men who held off an army of 300 Germans who had 20 tanks uh, for two days. And then early the morning of the third day, an Army Air Force squadron flew in to, to join in on the battle. And after uh, destroying about 15 tanks, the Germans gave up. In David Wheeler's words, he said, we were successful because we didn't know how many of them there were, and they didn't know how few of us there were. Sharing of those stories <clears throat> led to my father being nominated as a distinguished alumni of the Arcola High School. The Sioux Stout of Arcola, in doing the research to verify for that nomination, kept running across all the accomplishments of his brother, Ruskier, and both of them were recognized as distinguished alumni in 2014. Unbeknownst to the family, following that, Dr. Robert Errol of Arcola contacted Senator Chapin Rose and asked about the possibility of naming Illinois Route 133 through Douglas County as the Gear Brothers Memorial Highway. Senator Rose steered a joint resolution to the Illinois Senate and House of Representatives, and a dedication ceremony was held on November 8th of 2015. It was such a large family, and they all really remained so close. Nobody talked about their experiences in the war, but they, they all hung close together. And they were, they were a good, hardworking, honest family. The VFW in Arcola was named in his honor, along with Popeye Pullen and Harold Reinheimer. They were 20, there was a total of 23 men from Arcola who died during World War II such a, a huge sacrifice for such a small town. Wowee! Yeah, wowee, <laughs> let me tell you what. We're live back in the WEIU TV studio. Thank you so much for joining us for Arcola, This Is Our Story. We just saw five amazing stories and the last one was very touching, very emotional, and we are happy to be able to show respect and honor for the Gear family and make that part of our story tonight. It, it was really an emotional one, and we were in the edit bays a lot of times helping, and that one there especially, we cried. Mm -hmm. I mean, this uh, program is so close to our hearts. When we come into a community like Arcola and we say, do you want to tell your story? We become like family to this community. Absolutely. And when we say we cried, we really did. And I did <laughs> during that interview as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me tell you something. What you see on air right now is Amy Jones. She's uh, answering the phone right now. And we've got a lot of other people standing by to be able to answer the phones. And uh, what we want you to do is call the number at the bottom of your screen. And you need a copy of the DVD tonight. And that's how you get it, by calling the number at the bottom of your screen. We've got how many? Eight phone operators back here, and several of them are storytellers tonight. So one copy is $75, two or more are $60 each. So call right now. When you call, you get us energized because we know you're supporting WEIU, but you're also supporting Arcola. When we uh, start our night, we need 20 calls, and that's how we do it around here. We need 20 people who love Arcola. Maybe you don't live there anymore. Maybe you're watching online. We need you to call right now. We want 20 people to call during this break. Who's going to be the next one to call? Everybody here is willing and ready to, to talk to you tonight. We got Pat, Carolyn, John, <laughs> Ken, you take the rest. You know everybody. We have Pat, Carolyn, John, there we Amy, go. Larry, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Uh, Tom and Mick here in the house tonight. So if you know one of these people standing by to answer the phones, give them a call and uh, say, you know what, I appreciate you giving a story about Arcola and taking part in this show, and I want to support you. So speaking of one of those people, I have a gentleman here next to me, and this is Mr. Pat Monahan. He's been a big supporter of Arcola. This is our story. So thank you so much for joining us this evening, Pat. I'm going to put this mic right over here to you. So. How are things going? I want you to give a shout out to our Oh, Cola we're doing great. We're doing great. Our Cola's got a great story. We're thankful for WIU to allow us to tell it. 
and to let lots of other people know the secret sauce that we've developed over <laughs> several years. I mean, we got the Broom Corn Festival, we got Raggedy Ann, we got great high school football, great high school academics, we got uh, Broom Corn Festival. It's just a great community, and we're happy to have the opportunity to tell our story. Well, thank you, and we are and happy to be Everyone will need it. that DVD. It's a great, you know, we're just getting started now, but there's a, some super stories on there. We got How Come Our Cola is the Birthplace of Pro Football. You'll be hearing that soon. Absolutely, and we've got Terry Miller in the house tonight. He made the trip all the way from Lexington, Kentucky, and he's the storyteller for that show, for that story. So don't go anywhere. You'll want to hear more about that. But right now, I'm going to send it back over to Jana. Thank you, Ken. We have all the phones are busy except for one. That is so exciting. Arcola, you rock. I'd like to do a couple thank yous right off the bat. I'd like to thank Jane, Bill, Pat, and Susie. So there's four people that have already called in. We are needing 20 this break. Who's going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Come on in, Ken. Well, you know what? We've got a lot of um, people on the phones, but we've got a couple of people who are not on the phone right now. The number's at the bottom of your screen, and you know what? I bet your cell phone <laughs> is sitting right there beside you. You don't even have to get up. Just take a little drink, get a little call. snack, and give us a call. That's all you got to do. <laughs> we are having so much fun in the studio tonight, and we would just love for you to give us a call. Sometimes when you call, you might want to speak to a specific person. That's fine. If you call somebody and say, I want to talk to Pat, we'll switch your room. It's okay. That's it's okay. You talk to whoever you want to. This is all about our cola mm -hmm. tonight and all about sharing the stories with your friends, your family, and sharing everything our cola. We are, we are so excited about the people in the house tonight. Doc Errol is in the house. Yeah, Doc Will Errol. Wilmer Otto is in the house. Alice Rippey. Terry, Terry Miller. Miller. We've got lots of people over there. We've got a little living room area over here where people are watching and enjoying this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here, we're going we're gonna to get it on camera for you okay. so you can see You're everybody. Over there. Wave. Everybody give us a wave, wave over, there. over there. Terry, wave, Terry. There he is right there. We have had so much fun with these people. So they if you know any of those people sitting in our living room area, give us a call right now. Tell them thank you for being mm -hmm. a part of the program, mm -hmm. Arcola, This Is Our Story, and say, hey, I want to copy that DVD because mm -hmm. I know them. You know, we talk about why did WEIU decide to do a uh, program on Arcola. Well, if we don't do it, who's going to do it? We are excited about being a part of uh, Arcola. And tonight we are featuring our cola and we are really pumped about it. Well, I'll tell you what, let me go over a couple of stories that we've already heard. We have Errol's Coffee Club and Larry Bushu is in the house and he is right over here on the phone. So if you know Larry, he was the storyteller for that. And we learned a lot about the coffee club. And I'll tell you what, I would have been honored to be a part of that coffee club. Wouldn't you have, Jaina? Absolutely. We love, that's one of my favorites. And you know why? It's because they get to write their name on the coffee cup. Mm -hmm. And you, ha it, when they get so many, uh, they run out, you have to wait until somebody dies or somebody moves away. Isn't yeah. that something? Well, I would hope they would move. I so. hope they'd move too. But, you know, we all got to die sometime. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about living <laughs> and good. let's talk about what's going on in our cola. And let's talk about the amazing mm -hmm. stories that we're hearing tonight. So I know you're enjoying it mm -hmm. because you're giving us energy right now. The phones are ringing. We've got a few who, mm -hmm. who are still standing by. So go ahead and call that number at the bottom of your screen. Get your copy. You won't want to not have a copy Absolutely. We need 20 people. And you know what? We've already got probably at least six. They're working on the names right now. We want to give you a shout out. We want to say thank you. This is what it's all about, is being family around here. We have become such good friends with a lot of these storytellers, and we're thrilled that they're here to share this fun night with us. Look at that. We've got Look a at trophy. That. that is the state champion's mm -hmm. football trophy right there in the WEIU TV studio. Thank you, Carolyn yeah, Cloyd, for bringing that in tonight. It was a pleasure mm -hmm. going over there and touching it we and being a part of history. I didn't want to touch it. I was afraid I was going to break it. I'm like, <laughs> Carolyn, I'm not touching that. No way, but a lot of the guys in here tonight decided they wanted to touch it and get their photo taken. Let me talk about a couple of other stories. Economic Development, who was also uh, told by Pat Monahan. Lots of great things going on in Arcola. Uh, the evolution of Latino heritage. We learned so much about all the different things, the culture, the diversity that Arcola has. A lot of different things going on in Arcola other than what other small towns have. And I think it's a really great thing for the diversity and the culture that Arcola represents. It sure is. Brenda's getting ready to hand me some more uh, names and thank yous. We'd like to thank Jackie. She's calling all the way from Brockton. Joni, Joni from Arcola. Arcola. 
I wonder if that's Joni Wanamaker. I bet you it is. I bet it is because, Joni, if that's you, you've got a story coming up later. Margaret from Arcola and Myra from Decatur, and she said her mom was in the cap and gown story. Oh, that's, that's a great awesome. story. awesome. Thank you so much. And Susie from Arcola as well. We are up to, right now, we're up to almost 10 people, so we got to get phones going. We need 20, and we could even surpass it. Yay for our cola. <laughs> absolutely amazing, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's absolutely amazing. So we, some more stories that we've got coming up for you tonight. We've got another um, story by a special lady in the house. Her name is Alice Rippey, mm -hmm. and she's sitting over in the living room area, and Alice is just a doll. She works at the depot. Um, she's going to be telling a story about that and the museum. And Alice told me a little bit ago that I, I said, thank you so much for helping promote this program. And she said, you know what? I put that poster in my car window and I drove all around Aww. with it and she's parked out here in the lot and still has that poster up in her car window so Alice you're a special you lady are. and we really appreciate your support she was the first person really that we met in our cola and we go to the depot and she's telling story after story after story we didn't want to leave no I mean we were just in Roast and what she yep. was telling us. It was so fun. So you have to visit yep. the depot and learn there all about it. There she is the, right there now. There she is. Give us a wave. Give us a wave. Hi, Alice. Alice is amazing and she is so much fun and is so knowledgeable in what's going on in Arcola. You know what? I've got some more thank yous here. I've got Dawn from Arcola and I have Dan from <laughs> Springfield. Wow. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and calling all the way from Springfield, and thank you from Arcola as well. That's right. You know, let's tell you one more time, if you're enjoying this program, call your friends, call your family, call people that, that don't live in Arcola. They can go online to weiu.net, and they can watch this amazing program on the great town of Arcola. Yes, we are streaming. You can call in from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. We're sharing Arcola with the world tonight. The phones are buzzing. That's awesome. <laughs> They're, that is awesome. And we've got people back here saying, you want to take this call or do you want to take this call? <laughs> they're so they're switching around. seats. So if you want to talk to a special storyteller or a phone operator, you just say so. Mm -hmm. One of the great things that I wanted to talk about with Dr. Errol, he was on our champion group. And when we were together with him, we were looking for a place to, to take all the uh, interviews at. We couldn't find a place that, but that didn't have a train in the background. So he said, let's, let's go to the library. Yeah, and you know what they did? They closed the library for two days for mm -hmm. us for the production. And we felt bad for all the people that wanted to use mm -hmm. the library, but you know what? It was a great historical oh marker for us to be able to utilize. And thank you to the board, mm -hmm. the library board, and thank you, Dr. Errol, for allowing us to use that great facility. And speaking of Dr. Errol, he told a story about the library. So you'll, that'll be coming up in the next couple segments. And that was awesome, too. Yes, it will. The number's at the bottom of your screen. There's Dr. Errol oh, right Dr. there. Errol Give us a wave, wave Dr. Errol. Yeah, he's so Thank you cute. for joining us tonight. And um, you know someone else I want to thank? I want to thank our underwriters. Yes. We have Monaghan Partners. We have the Libman Company. Uh, Green Mill Village Carriage Crossing Senior Living Center. Best Western Plus. Uh, the Green Mill Theater. The Arcola Foundation and the Tourism and mm -hmm. the Chamber of Commerce and uh, Arcola First Bank and Diamond Brothers Insurance. And we really support, yes. all of those places have really supported mm -hmm. Arcola This Is Our Story and we couldn't be more appreciative. Right, when we do a program like this, it's not something that just we do overnight. This is a four month commitment from the day we go and have our community meeting until tonight when you see the finished product four months of working and it's so worth it. It is worth it because this is what's happening tonight. Tonight mm -hmm. is the night we've all been waiting for and you see all the excitement from the storytellers. I'll tell you what, when we go back to the segments, these storytellers are going to say this is outstanding. All of the people calling in from all over the place. We've had phone calls in other uh, other times that we've done mm -hmm. this from different countries, different states. So if you know people that are out of the area, give them a call mm -hmm. and say, you've got to tune in to weiu.net, watch this online and get your copy of this DVD. People are calling from out of the uh, area. John called from Arcola and he said Harold Good was one of his students. So I don't know who that is. I don't know where Harold we'll is. We'll pass that on. But Tanya from Mattoon called, thank you so much. Sue from Arcola, Jessica from Decatur. So Jessica, thank you so much. Somebody obviously got on the phone and said, you got to tune in and watch Jessica. And Vicki called from Rantoul. There you go. Thank you so much. And we got Pam from Champaign. So they're calling from everywhere. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for calling in, becoming a member of WEIU, and supporting Arcola as well as WEIU. Everybody's on the phone except for Pat. 
There we go. Pat Who knows now. Pat Monahan? <laughs> Give us a call right now and get everybody on the phone. There he is right there. Yeah. We Give need someone to get all eight phones calling right now. It's someone so, give us a call. We we call that a phone blitz and we are just about there. Does your phone even work? Tom? Have you had the call yet, Pat? Not yet. So you got to be the phone right now. The number's on the bottom of your screen. Give us a call. Let's get him busy. So um, we're going to go back to the show here in just a few minutes. We've got some more stories coming up. Let me just give you a preview of what we've got coming up next. The game that was never played, uh, Terry Miller is telling that story. We've got Aikman Wildlife Adventure, the Libman Company, Arcola Historic Depot, and uh, the Lawn Rangers. And we've got another um, uh, a person to honor mm -hmm. uh, called R Robert Popeye Pullen, mm -hmm. which is a very emotional uh, story. So lots of great it. stories coming up. That's just a preview of a few right there. Mm -hmm. Tonight, we've talked already, we have 24 storytellers. Wow, 24 people in Arcola area said, you know what, this is important to us. We want to capture the history, the, the people that have made Arcola what it is. Like you said, the people that are in the military, what a great opportunity for them to tell the story and honor those veterans. Absolutely. So keep those phones ringing, keep watching <laughs> online, keep watching on television. And you know what, if you're not exactly sure how to get us you know, it depends on your cable provider, what channel we're on. We're on channel 51 over the air. We're on satellite channel 51. You just need to check what cable provider we're on or else just go through the menu and just keep on clicking until mm -hmm. you get WEIU. And when you see one of those storytellers, you tune in and you don't go anywhere because you won't want to miss out Absolutely on Absolutely not. The phones are still ringing. We are not going anywhere because these phones are still <laughs> ringing. And you know what? That's telling us that you love our cola. You place a value on your community. I get goosebumps just talking about it because we have gotten to know so many great people and they're right here tonight. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. I love this. I gotta tell you right now, I love this. When this starts yeah. happening, people I get just excited. I get teared up and yeah. I hear I can feel it inside mm -hmm. because this is what public broadcasting yeah. is all about. And this is about W E I U being your public broadcasting station and being able to bring mm -hmm. these wonderful stories. Carolyn Cloy, right look at her right there. She's got her shirt on tonight. She's taken she's got the Pullen on the back on the back of her shirt. Does she? Yeah, she had it specially made. She's the storyteller for the Robert Popeye Pullen, and which will be coming up she later. She did a great job. You know, we talk about why would you want to buy a DVD of this program? You're not buying it. You're giving a gift to WEIU for all the hard work that we've done to put it together. This is not. This is a professionally edited uh, program. It's what we love to do here. Give us a call right now. One DVD is $75, and if you'd like more than one, they end up being $60 a piece. There's a, there's a picture of it right now, professionally edited. It has the, the song, Exit 203. 203, at the very beginning, at the very end. And somebody asked, who was that singing it? It was Shammy and Friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we met uh, one of the family members yep. uh, when we were having lunch up in Arcola at yes. the Dutch Kitchen. And sitting right next to us, they said, hey, are you from WEIU? And one thing led to mm -hmm. another. And the song ended up on part of the program. Yes. And we were proud to be a part of that. And he's, I guess he's passed on now. So what a great tribute to him to, to have a song about Arcola that he wrote and sang. Absolutely, great song, only Arcola has that, Exit 203. Now let me tell you another little story about that. We wanted to make sure that we got the exit signs for 203, so Jane and I drive up I-57, mm -hmm. and we get out, and, and I'm standing there, and all these trucks are blowing by me, and I'm, I'm taking the picture of this exit sign, so and I, it was an I, experience, but it was a lot of fun. And I was in the vehicle just looking and taking photos of her, <laughs> and then we'll tell you later about the train incident that we had. That yeah, was really that was fun, a lot too. of fun, too. We are so proud of all the people that are calling tonight. Keep it going. This is amazing that we have this many people calling on our first break. We knew you could do it. We weren't sure because it's a small community, but you know what? Right now you're saying, we're not small. No. We got the biggest We've got heart. big hearts. That's exactly right. And we are so proud to be a part of a program like this. There again, if you want to, if you would like to get a DVD, it's $75 and we'll send you that gift immediately back to you. A lot of people said, how long does it take to get the DVD? It takes about four to six weeks because we have it tonight. We're gonna, once we know how many to order, we'll send them off and it's about four to six weeks, but we get them in. The minute we get them in, they go right out to you. Let me tell you about something else special is our WEIU TV public broadcasting Facebook page. And we have a lot of feature stories on there that we've been promoting this program for the last month. But none of those stories are in this program. Those are all extra stories that really showcased our COLA in a different way. But um, 
you won't you won't see any of the stories on tonight's program right. on Facebook. So that's why the DVD mm -hmm. is extra special. It's extra special because you know most towns, you know, it's a two-hour program, but it's more because if you go online, I don't know how much more footage is there, but probably another Ooh, at least another yeah, hour. Ooh wee! <laughs> We've got some excitement. We have Tom Mulligan exciting. back here. He's the superintendent for the schools, and he's also been on uh, another yeah. program that we produce here called City Spotlight. So thank you, Tom, for coming in tonight, and oh, thank yeah. you for your excitement. Woo he's excited. Somebody called from Arthur. Barb, thank you so much. Jalene from Columbus. That's amazing. Wow. Thank you. Uh, Pris from Arcola. Thank you so much. Nancy from Arcola. Thank you. Sharon from Arcola, thank you, and Nancy from Oakland, appreciate it. Okay, I have some thank yous as well. Teresa from Carver, Tony from Arcola, Ebby from Arcola, Wow. Uh, Tom from Arcola, and hold on, can't get these apart. The Key family from Arcola and Denny from Hinesboro. Thank you so much for supporting Arcola. This is our story. It's amazing how many people have called. It looks like we're up to 21. Tw no, there's 29. 30? 31. 31 people. Oh, my gosh. Give yourself yeah. a hand. Woo. I'll tell you what. 31 people have called. 31 people we're have so called in. excited. You know what? We, if you want to continue to call, that's fine, but we'd love to get back to the program. You're enjoying it. We yeah. want to be sure that um, we can thank others, too. Okay, let me thank the last two, and then we'll get you back to the program. Francis from Arcola and Jeff from Arcola, thank you so much for calling in this first break. We'll be back with you in another five stories, so stay tuned. Arcola, this is our story. Enjoy.